Hello boys and girls, welcome back to Relax and Read with Mrs. B. Today is an exciting book about horses. If you are curious or interested in just learning more about them, this is a great starter book and it is called A Word About Horses. This is written by Lynn Gibbs and illustrated by Christine Mason. The points of a horse. Each part of the horse has a different name called a point. The points shown here are some of the most important parts of the horse. Measuring a horse. Horses are measured in hands. One hand is equal to about four inches. A horse's height is measured from the withers, that's the shoulder, to the ground. A pony is a horse that measures under 13 hands. Chestnuts. A horse has a chestnut on each leg. See? These growths of skin resembling a chestnut are unique like a human being's fingerprint. They can identify a horse. So each horse is very different from the next. Jobs around a stable. There are many jobs to do around a horse stable. Horses need to be washed and groomed. The stalls and fenced in areas should be cleaned every day. It is important to keep the stables, grounds, and horses in good condition. There are all the children working at the stable doing very important jobs. Grooming. So here are some of the tools used for grooming. Stabled horses should be groomed every day. Grooming helps prevent disease. It also keeps the horse's coat clean and shiny. Grooming brush. A grooming brush is used to remove dried mud, dirt, and dust from a horse's coat. A curry comb is used to clean the finishing brush. A finishing brush removes dust and dandruff from the coat, mane, and tail. A hoof pick is used to clean dirt and stones from the horse's feet, working downwards from the heel towards the toe. Rubber curry comb. A rubber curry comb is another grooming tool used to remove dried mud from a horse's coat. A scrub brush. A damp scrub brush is used on the horse's mane, tail, and feet. It can also be used to remove stable stains. The finishing cloth adds a final polish after grooming. Separate sponges are needed to clean a horse's eye and muzzle and the dock area. Horses in the pasture. A finishing brush should never be used over the whole body of a horse kept in the pasture. There should be some grease left in the coat in order to help keep rain out. A grooming brush or rubber curry brush should be used instead to remove dried mud and dirt. A lot of work goes into keeping a horse nice and clean. Getting ready to ride. These children are preparing to ride their horses. They put on and adjust their saddles bridles and bits before they ride. Both the horse and the rider must be comfortable and safe. Have you ever ridden a horse before? I have. It is just a one of a kind experience, boys and girls. Saddles and stirrups. Different types of saddles are used for a variety of equestrian horse riding sports, including racing, show jumping, dressage, and polo. All-purpose saddle. The all-purpose saddle can be used for most equestrian activities such as pleasure riding, hunting, and jumping. 
And here is a diagram of the all-purpose saddle. Saddle pad. In addition to keeping the saddle clean, saddle pads are often used under the saddle to give extra comfort to the rider and the horse's back. Girth. Usually made of leather, nylon, or human-made fiber, a girth is placed under the horse's belly and holds the saddle in place. Stirrups. Stirrups hang from the saddle and support a rider's feet. Stirrups should be made of stainless steel. Safety stirrups help prevent a rider's foot from becoming tangled in the stirrup should the rider fall from the horse. Horse riding equipment. These children are wearing the proper horse riding equipment while they ride their horses. Proper equipment is used for both comfort and safety. Helmets protect the head from falls and reflective vests notify drivers if the horse is ridden on the road. These saddles and helmets are used for riding English style. The other style of riding is Western, where broad brimmed hats are worn and the saddles are longer. Bridles and bits. A bridle supports the bit in the horse's mouth. The reins are attached to the bit and give the rider some control over the horse's speed. Parts of a bridle. A bridle is made up of several pieces. The headpiece, cheek pieces, brow band, nose band, and a selected bit. Types of bridles. There are several types of bridles. The snaffle bridle and the double bridle are the most common. Snaffle bridle. The snaffle bridle is the simplest and most widely used. It has a single rein and either a jointed or straight bit. The double bridle is used mainly for showing. It has two bits, each with separate reins. Nose bands. There are several types of nose bands which one to use depends on the habits of the horse. The standard nose band is the cavison. The drop nose band is used on horses that tend to pull and need to close their lower jaws. Bits. The bit is attached to the bridle and rests on the horse's tongue. A bit is controlled by the reins and helps to position the horse's head and control its pace and direction. Types of bits. Different bits are used depending on whether the horse is strong in the mouth or which equestrian discipline you are competing in. For example, a snaffle is used on horses with a soft mouth. A horse stable. This is an overview of a horse stable. Equipment, food, and storage areas are identified by name. So here we have the tap room, the manager, bedding storage, hay storage, water point, here's the gate, the drainage, muck heap. Stables and fields. Trough. The water trough should always be filled with fresh, clean drinking water for the horses. Feed bucket. There is a variety of feed buckets, including fixed corner buckets, portable buckets that fit on the door, or buckets that sit on the ground. Stable areas vary in design according to their use and the number of horses being stabled but there are some general rules that apply to all stables and fields. Manure. Stable should be cleaned out, mucked every day, and the manure should be kept away from the area. Fields. The fields where horses roam and graze must be free of poisonous plants. Fields should be checked every day for broken fences, rabbit or groundhog holes and trash. Run-in shed. A run-in shed is an open-sided building in the field where horses go to rest. During the summer, it gives shelter from the heat, rain, and flies. 
In winter, it provides shelter from the cold and snow. Hay storage. Horses like to eat good quality hay, and so would I if I were a horse. The amount of hay fed depends on the size of the horse and the amount of exercise it gets. Hay needs to be stored in a dry area so it does not become moldy. Then that becomes harmful for the horse to consume. Tack room. All the equipment needed to ride a horse, such as saddles and bridles, are stored in a tack room. Stable. A horse's stable is its bedroom, a warm, snug place for the horse to sleep and rest. It should be kept clean and dry with fresh bedding. There are so many important jobs to do in the stable and the fields. Horse jumping. After young riders have experienced riding, they can begin jumping with their horses. When jumping, it is important to have the necessary horse riding equipment and to have an adult nearby. Jumping. Show jumping is one of the most popular equestrian sports. Inexperienced riders start by learning to jump over very low obstacles like this one trotting poles and cross poles. Riders first learn to trot and canter over poles on the ground. They can advance to small cross poles. Uprights and spreads. Once they have mastered cross poles, young riders can advance to upright and spread fences. All riders become more experienced. The fences become more difficult. Triple bar. The triple bar is a spread fence with three sets of poles built in a stair step pattern with the highest pole at the back. Parallel bars. The parallel bar is one of the most difficult fences to jump. It can be made of poles or planks. And look at this one, the water jump. As its name implies, the water jump in a show jumping event has a sunken trough of water. A smaller, narrower water tray is used when a fence is included in the obstacle. And that is the end of a word about horses. Boys and girls, I hope this book has given you more information about horses and has piqued your curiosity. So you can learn more about horses and maybe even experience some horseback riding. So thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye friends.